Hey guys, this is Dick. I just wanted to let you know that this is a recorded uh, version of our live broadcast of episode 125 on the Ticket Stub. Uh, we record, we uh, broadcasted live on the 12th of March 2020 at our usual time. Uh, so just want to give you a heads up if you're listening to us now. Uh, also, we have a special guest uh, coming in. We have an uh, actor and impersonator, David Bourne, coming in on our studio for episode 126 which will be happening next Thursday live in the studio on the 19th. So make sure to check that out. We're going to put out uh, more info on David, what he's been in, and all that kind of stuff. So really uh, excited about having him in. And if you want to catch David in his uh, Robin Williams impersonator act, he will be here, I believe it's still going on. I'm not really sure since you know the Corona stuff's going on. But on the 20th, he's performing at the Crichton Theater. But uh, I really don't know about that right now. But uh, you should check him out. If you want to check him out right now, robinwilliamsimpersonator.com. Uh, but ho- hopefully we'll get him in the studio regardless next Thursday. Uh, we'll see you guys later, and hope you enjoyed this show. And this is episode 125 of the Take a Step podcast. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Hello and welcome to the Ticket Stub, your favorite place for movie news and reviews. Ticket Stub is recorded every Thursday, comes live on FM 104.5 and 106.1 in the Conroe areas. You can also find us on IRLoneStar.com. We do a podcast. When's the podcast normally drop? Friday, Thursday night? It usually drops right after the show, within 24 hours. Within 24 hours of the show. Of the live broadcast. Of the live broadcast, which is noon on Thursdays. So look for that by Friday morning on your way into work. Uh, Ticket Stub has a ticket sponsorship with the Grand Theater and Amstar Cinema. If you would like to win free tickets to either the Grand or Amstar Cinemas, send us a DM, slide into our DMs. We will put you on the weekly giveaway. Who are DMs? <laughs> wow, is that like a PBS that, like, the more you know? <laughs> Oh, well, let me explain that real quick because okay. I, I think a lot of people are kind of confused. On yeah, the world wants to know. Basically, folks, if you want to win two tickets to any grand, any grand. A, any grand or any Amstar theater around the, around the uh, country, the world. Well, I guess I don't think they're in the world. I don't know if they are. Or not. Uh, Chris, Chris, here. Chris, what are you? Oh, hey, Chris, what are Chris, you? Chris, you're not here. Uh, uh, basically, to enter, this is on you need to mandatory <laughs> quarantine in New Orleans yeah. right now. <laughs> I hope not. Golly, uh, basically, you got to submit your name and the best way to contact you. Uh, through our DMs on social media or the Take Step Podcast at gmail.com. And we enter you into our random name gener- generator picker. That's, what, that's, a, that's a tentative title for it. And basically, when you get picked, we'll that's contact you and we'll give you, we'll send you your tickets. But we don't take your name out. Ah, you stay in. So you stay in. So the more people, uh, to discourage as many people <laughs> yeah, not to say. join. So honestly, you so don't you want get people picked to join. every week. Uh, but yeah, that's the way I've set it up because I was getting really weird to manage it. And this is the best way I can figure out like how we can get more people to interact with us. So send us your name and uh, best way to contact you, phone number, in the uh, back email studio, address. We have, a, we have a giant dartboard, and we get Dick really hammered. Yeah, and actually, and we we do, spin him what, what we do is we continue that cocaine mouse study, and we give mice a bunch of cocaine, and we have your your name all over. Oh, and whichever one they go and to. Whichever they really go to. Okay. So that's how we do it. Yeah, and we also have a bunch of turtles in like a, inside a turned-over We change it up turned over we, pail, we change it up. And we lift it up in we the do, first we turtle. We do marble mazes. Each I turtle mean, has a name on it, and the first turtle to cross the finish line outside the circle. Uh, you know, yeah, we there's a bunch of ways that we do yeah, it, but it is random. Ways. It, it is random. Jesus. And so... Uh, we want you to have the opportunity to win those tickets. Uh, by the way, my name is Connor. I'm one of the hosts of the show. Joined in studio, as always, by Dick Schistler. Sounds like he's doing good. Our other host, Chris Appel, is... Yeah, how's that coffee tasting, man? That's good. Yeah, it's good. It's hot. Nice and hot. Uh, Chris Appel is uh, G- GM of the Grand Theater here in Conroe. Normally on the show yeah, with us. they have us. a new flavor. It's Lysol flavor. Oh, yeah. That's right. It cleans you on the it way. It cleans, <laughs> cleans you inside. Yeah, that's funny. If you drank a little bleach right now, it might help me clear things out. Uh, That's a real deal, you know that, right? Drinking bleach, like people are put making PSAs not to drink bleach. Oh, if you get it crying. Actually, I would say go ahead and not make that because if people are dr- drinking bleach, it's like kind of a natural selection. Yeah, you know, it's like some of these. This, this is a good thinning of the herd, maybe. The oh old, no! Oh, is that bad? Oh. 
Sorry, like, whatever. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, Chris is gone. He's in New Orleans on a work conference for the Grand, the- Grand Theater. And uh, what do you think they talk about? They're like, this is how we show movies, guys. This is how they're you like, do when it. you scoop the popcorn, you got to do it like this. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure they have like real stuff to talk about. But, I, but well, what's funny is I bet the the coordinator for that whole conference is like, we got to talk about coronavirus. We got to talk about. It. I mean, we have to talk about. It. We have to talk about it. Yeah, I guarantee that's like 50% of their conversation right now is what does the theater do about career? Like, they probably have all these plans of like team building. Hey, let's all lean back on each other and learn how to support. But no, we're not doing that. Don't touch no. anyone <laughs> six feet away. And it's then all fist bumps. Just shut down your theaters for a, for a bit. And it's probably because of that movie Outbreak we reviewed. Dude, where okay. So I want to talk. So two episodes ago. Or, it was, was last there, episode. Yeah, was it just, okay. Did yeah. I miss an episode? I'm, I'm, no, I'm we so were, flustered We were here. here last week. Okay, was it just you and I? Yeah. Okay. Chris has been gone. Oh, man, Chris. We don't even know if he's part of the show anymore. Honestly, like. I think he actually sent, he DM'd us saying, enter me into the ticket <laughs> giveaway. And we're like, hey. I thought you were a host. He's <laughs> like, like, oh, this is awkward. Uh, just go ahead and put me on that list for the ticket <laughs> giveaways. Uh, yeah, Outbreak. So we watched that last week and we both reviewed it. And at the time, and, and I'm still not like in panic mode about the corona, but at the time, it was a little bit more of like a everyone's overreacting type thing. It seems like things are ramping up now. But I'll say that I feel like, no, I know Netflix put it on Netflix, and that's why it's gaining so much popularity. But I feel like we were a little bit on the – yeah, spray that. Get a little <laughs> – Kill it. <laughs> I feel like we were on the kind of the front end of watching Outbreak because since then I've seen like 20 people post on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, like, oh, look what I'm watching. And I'm like, yeah, we already been there, done that. Well, subscribe to the Ticket Show Podcast. Yeah, exactly. Right? But if you do watch the out, if you do watch Outbreak at some point because of this virus, you need to go back to episode 124, listen to us talk about it there because we have some great commentary – and uh, if you haven't seen the movie, it will probably spoil things for you. But if you have seen it, and the part that is coming so true to life is how they're fi- – at first they were saying that uh, – Well, the quarantine's coming true where they're just shutting things down. Shutting things down and also the, the how it went airborne, you know, and now they're uh, – they, Mutated. Yeah, mutated. I don't, I don't think corona mutated, but they're learning more about it or, or whatever, and now they're really realizing how – like breath communicate communicate. Well, that was so nice about that Joe Rogan podcast that came out, I believe, beginning of the week. With, yeah, a couple uh, days ago. Michael a couple days ago. Or something. Yeah, some Whatever. consider of control. That, well, someone basically said, summary, he's the guy who Brad Pitt played in World War Z. Yeah, that's right. But not the action star. He just but knows. Not hot. He, he understands how things travel. He has less abs, though. Same guy. But w- what frightens me the most is he was basically saying, you know, when the summer comes, it's going to go into incubation period. But then when it comes back, it might mutate. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, so this is how it really happens. It's not just like a weak thing, like an outbreak where one guy sticks his hand in the blood jar and just oh gosh, all of a sudden... Oh, gosh. stupid scene. Well, that, that was the other part he said that was like, people are treating this like it's a like it's a virus blizzard, like it's going to last a few days and then be gone. He's saying it's more of a virus winter. Like, you got to be prepared for months of this. Like, this is the tip. I mean, they're, they're postponing all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, they're postponing worry, all this we've, stuff. We've cleaned each other before. Yeah, we didn't. We took a bath together before yeah. we did the show just to make sure. Uh, but, you know. They're well, Holly was worried about the studio because she's like, you know, people come in and do things. And I was like, well, we kind of, we have our hand sanitizers and we have our Lysols that we clean the mics That's with. why we're six, we're exactly six foot one and, inch apart. Uh, we do it. Six feet I, is the, uh, I, I asked her, I was like, do I just need to do this every time someone comes in? She's like, yeah, but just to be safe. So, you need to get one of those things right around the door frame that when they come in, it like, pfft, and sprays them with whatever that mist is, you know? Well, that didn't help uh, oh, David Spade. Or is that <laughs> not David Spade. David Spade. <laughs> Sorry. It was, uh, it was the, the pedophile. Uh, no, no, we can't say his name. Yeah, oh, anymore. yeah, he who must not be named. Uh, I don't know his name. Kevin Spacey. Kevin, Kevin Spacey. I was thinking Thank Patrick you. Swayze, but <laughs> Kevin Spacey. His uh, character tried to run to that room. That didn't well, he got a little all. case of the willies, man. He got a little bit of the willies, you know? Uh, outbreak. Again, check it out. Again, with people... Like the most stereotypical <laughs> outbreak or like infectious movie, like the one person who you think would tell somebody, hey, I got bit or I got infected or I might be infected. He didn't say anything. What's well, the same as that lady, that viral video of the lady who's saying like, do not touch your face. Let me turn the page. You know, it's like if those people can't do it, if the people who are telling you and the people who are the most trained and the most skilled, if they can't follow their own rules, then we're screwed. Well, I mean, I think, we're just, we're totally screwed. Well, I think also the information out there is so wild where it's like, like, don't touch your face, for example. Well, they need to explain what, like, what, what that does because yeah. I don't, because when some people who don't really know anything, to me, it's like, oh, that's because I already have the virus and I'm just going to get worse if I keep touching my face. It's something about your eyes, I think, or something? Well, I don't it's, really know. it's more of like when you're around people, don't touch your face. But if you're at your home, yeah, 
Just go ahead and just touch just yourself. Touch crazy. Go crazy. Yeah, go with crazy. Your but make yeah. sure you Lysol up first. Yeah, you got to spray down. Yeah, you got to spray down. Anyways, a uh, lot of uh, Corona talk going on. Uh, uh, you know, I, I did want to talk about. So this pod, we're recording this Thursday at noon. By the time you listen to it, there may have been new stuff that's come out. But yeah. as of this moment, here are the things that are currently shut down or postponed. I know this isn't movie talk, but it's just well, no, it's, it's too relevant. I was for just us why I wish Chris was here because now, th- now communities like Montgomery County are basically making statements. Like I think the biggest statement was in Harris County, which is Houston. Basically, they said something about like uh, gatherings more than fifty people. I believe. Aren't encouraged, but they're not. They're not enforcing. And they're. I think they're enforcing a thousand. Okay. So any event that's a thousand or more, they're like you can't do it. Yeah, I guess my birthday party is not going to. So, happen. oh man. <laughs> but no, I think, I think I think that's what the, I think that's what the list. statement was. So anything bigger than that, and so I, I wonder if like movie theaters are going to be hit pretty hard just because of the stereo like the well, stereotype. Luckily, they did the new seating. You know, now they can only hold about fifty. People. Well, that's that's in, but the whole building holds more. Oh. So, uh, but then again, I, and like this is something that I'm very curious about because the Im- overall impact on the movie industry is going to be hit because production's basically stopped. So yeah. worldwide filming and all that stuff is going to be stopped pretty soon. Like I, I bet you the, the production studios are going to make statements. I know movies are being delayed. The Quiet Place 2 is the most recent movie. He basically said... Have they pushed it back now? They, they, they said we're going to postpone it. And what I love is they try to make it sound like it's the best interest for you because yeah, it's, a, exactly. it's a it's a buddy we movie. We don't want you to show it's up like, with your friend. And no, get... I think Jim, what's his name? Whatever. John Krasinski. John Krasinski put out a statement saying, like, the, the one of the things that we heard most about the first one was they enjoyed watching it with all their friends. So we don't want to encourage people getting together. <laughs> and I'm like, well, then just release it on streaming for 35 bucks. It, it has nothing to do with our bottom line. No. We don't care about making money. We don't want you and your buddies because you, if you won't go to this movie by yourself, it's too good. You're going to go with friends. And so we don't want to put you in that position to have to make that choice. So you know what? For you, we're going to go ahead and delay this film. You're welcome. Yeah. And I, we're, I, we're well, heroes. And I, I'm inter- interested to see the impact uh, on the overall, like what movies come out eight months from now. Or ten, uh, like a year from now, or something like that, because that's usually movies are wrapping up right now. It takes them about eight months to get into post production, and then to, if it's not graphical yep. heavy, and then they release it. So I feel like every uh, the the top end industry is rethinking when their release dates. Like they're probably trying to figure that out right now. Hmm. And I love that the current movies like Mulan, Black Widow. I love seeing them try to go like we're already there. Yeah, they're at the, we're, we're right. at the we're, finish line. We're there. literally releasing this movie in two weeks. And, and on top of that, they've probably spent $50 million yeah. putting ads out. And I, I cause like, okay, let's, let's, let's set this up real quick. Set it up. And I want listeners to participate too. Oh, okay. If you were in charge of, say, Mulan, what would you do? Mm. Are we waiting for them to respond? Yeah, listeners? thank you. We'll wait. Okay. Well. Uh, <laughs> but no, like, what would you do, Connor? Like, it's, you get the call was, right now like, from, like from Bob. When, Bob when, when's it Bob's to calling you, and he's like, "Hey, man, we're I'm leaving here, so I'm not really worried about what you do. Yeah. But my secretary needs to know what you're gonna do, uh, or my assistant. Whatever we're assuming you want. that the that the re- release date is like a couple weeks from now. Yeah. Oh gosh, if if it was this weekend, I would say push it out. You know, let, yeah. let's let's get it out there. We'll get that opening weekend surge still, and then people will freak out. If it's two weeks from now. I would help, I would postpone because there's no telling what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so look at the last 24 hours. I mean, so again, this is Thursday at noon. 24 hours ago, Wednesday at noon, there was still an NBA season to be played. There was still an NCAA tournament to be played. Baseball season wasn't going to be affected yet. Uh, the rodeo hadn't been canceled yet in the Houston, I mean, Houston area. U of H hadn't been closed down campus. Rice hadn't been closed. These school districts hadn't closed yet. And in 24 hours, look at how much has uh has fallen apart there's no telling no maybe in a couple of weeks things will kind of level off and people will start well, to especially industries like us or not industries like, <laughs> us, uh, like us in the movie biz well the movie business and other industries i think it's the smartest play because even if they stayed open the, people, the public's still not going to come yeah who's going to go because they, they that fear of the, you know getting you know some guys a bean counter going how many people are in this room it's more than fifty. We gotta get the hell out. It's like of here. Jason Bourne going like, "There's three um, exits. Okay, three <laughs> exits. What car? I know your license plate." And it, yeah, because like if Mulan, and this is where the streaming business side of the business to me is going to be greatly increased. Yeah, and it's smart. I'm surprised Netflix, if I missed it already, or other streaming services are not putting stuff out there like not as a joke, but saying like, "Hey, we we put up a bunch of content." Why don't you enjoy it while you're at home and being like, you know, those kind of yeah? Things. They should have a whole a whole tab like where it says like. 
cringeworthy dramas. Or bi- called, or, or not uh, cringeworthy. It's like binge worthy. Binge worthy. Yeah. Binge worthy, yeah. yeah they should have one called like quarantine. You know, <laughs> are you quarantine? Here you go. Here's a whole playlist of movies. It could be some like comedies because sometimes you need to laugh. And well, like, you a couple need to pass the time. So it's yeah. like, hey, watch all 20 seasons of The Bachelor. Or yeah, or watch like Love that. is Blind, season one. Did you watch that show? No, I have not. Uh-huh. I've seen they were promoting it, and I didn't really understand. Is it like a bachelor? Uh yeah, not I mean, there's not one person dating a bunch. It's like everyone dating. So it's like a big brother kind uh, of scenario. Sure. Where I've never watched Big Brother. So the, the plot of Love is Blind. Let me talk about this show just for one second. Is it, so it's a show. It's, it's, it's like it's a, a reality show. It's like an eight show. episode reality show. Okay. It's like eight episodes. They're each like 30. Do they right release now. it every week or is it all? I think it was released week by week, but it's all out there now. So it's all, you could binge it all. Okay. Basically what happens is the first two episodes, the people from the moment the thing starts until the very end, it's 40 days, I think. And their wedding is 40 days from the start of the deal. So they don't even know. They haven't met anybody yet, but if, okay. if they make it that far, it's 40 days they'll be married. So they, they start dating in these little pods where you can't see the other person. You can just hear them. Oh, and cool. They, they have like 12 dates a day or Would whatever. Would you shock this person? Yes. <laughs> shock them again? Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, so they're in these little pods and they're dating each other and they don't know. And then as time goes on, they start whittling down who they're having time with in these little like only voice pods. And the whole point is they just get to know each other. And then if they decide to get engaged in the pod, they have like 10 days. Dude, that's they, a horrible <laughs> yeah. idea. No, they get engaged to somebody they've never met. And that's the whole tag. I can't believe I just got engaged to someone I've never seen. Love is blind. And so if they do that, then uh, oh my God. Oh my, oh my and then, uh, then they meet each other. And then they have like 30 days to oh, okay. be engaged in real life. And they have to like meet each other's families and they live together. It's kind of like that show. Married at First Sight, See, which they, is a trashy missed, dra- they, like they Bravo show. They missed the show. drama, the drama uh, third act right here because what they could have done is they everyone has to pick their other pod, right? And if we matched, they go on to the next round. Yeah, exactly. So the next if you round don't match, you just fall off. is Bachelor in Paradise issue. Like you put everyone in this like. Well, really, they do, they do have some. They all go to the and same. And you can meet other people. Yeah, they, well, so they they do go. So that's to, how you create drama, man. TNT, call me. Right after the uh, well, you're they're on the same page. Right after they're in the pods and they all get engaged, they all go for like ten days to a resort in Mexico. But they're all at the same one, staying in rooms. So they like are meeting. Each other. Each other. Okay. So they are engaged, but they're meeting all the people they've already been dating through the because like, they all know each other. Yeah, engaged means nothing. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, movie, what movie is that from? It's like the re- <laughs> sounds like a Vince Vaughn it's thing horrible, or something. Yeah. I don't know. Horrible. Anyways, Love is Blind. Uh, why did we talk about that? I don't really That'd know. That'd be a good Corona thing, though. Let's, In let's, fact, that was a... Did you see that? That was a SNL skit. They, they had... Uh, Love uh, is Blind? Yeah, and... but they were like... For, it was for people who had the Corona who were quarantined in the different uh, pods because they're all by themselves. Well, again, let's get back to this kind of final comment, like the oh, Mulan thing. Okay. Uh, Mulan, like what would you do? I, I am kind of surprised that you know, the bigger companies aren't making a push to be like... And this is a perfect time to say, hey... Watch The Quiet Place 2 for 35 bucks. Yeah, and maybe not 35 That seems kind of... Like well, no, you get with under 50 people, <laughs> and you 40, watch it. You get your 49 closest friends together. Well, I mean, like, because that's what's... The perception of this stuff going on, to me, it's like, can I not even talk to my neighbor? Like, is that something that, like... It, if you do it like Tim Allen style, where, like, you only, you know, your, your well, mouth some is people are, Well, some people are taking it that extreme, which I get. Like, you're trying to... You don't want to be stupid. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. Like, you can only blame yourself if you get it and because you made stupid decisions. But then it's like, oh, am I not allowed to go to see my mom and dad? Uh, like, you know, because yeah. people are asking that question now. But I, can, I, I haven't gotten to that point where, I, from what I feel like, what you need to do is carry around uh, soap and wait, have access to soap and water. Mm-hmm. And before you sh- go into different rooms, just do something. Yeah. And before you make out with strangers, just yeah. spray a little of that Lysol. Think spray. about the Tinder impact. This is oh, happening. Oh wow, Tinder might crash over. Yeah, this next man. Few weeks. Uh, but no, or maybe it, not because it's only you know as long as you're not meeting up with 49 or more people on your Tinder date. Uh, that's in, that's in a, not in a day. That's not a quota. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, it, so it'd be a good opportunity for someone to be like, hey, because uh, I even wanted to. We'll talk about this next week. There's an article written about the the struggles with movie industry, uh, big studios. Is what movie is. What movie is uh, eligible for worldwide uh, release now? Yeah. And now they're kind of going like, oh, should we stream it, Netflix it, sell it to somebody else, or do we put it on the big screen? And I think this is a good opportunity to be like, hey, let's try that model where you can rent it right off the back for 35 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever. I mean, I wouldn't do 50 because you need five people to spend $10. That's about a movie ticket. Yeah. And I, I will say that if this quarantine thing – gets more serious, then I wouldn't be surprised if that starts to happen. Right? As, well, as long as people would, still kind of have free movement. It would certainly work for kids' movies because yeah. you're already, the you, you know there. the average family has one to two kids and you justify spending, oh, usually when we go to the movie theater, we're spending 80 bucks because of the popcorn. Yeah. But now we can be home. 
and you spend the forty dollars to watch the new Pixar movie. Well, plus you could do that and still release it theatrically after everything calms yeah. down because there's plenty of people who aren't going to do the rental thing, but would still go to the theater and watch yeah, it. Theater. Yeah, theater. And I don't know. You could you could do some weird math where you roll all that into the opening weekend sales or whatever. And that like Mulan, what I would do is say, hey, for for the time quarantine <clears> has <throat> been issued. We're, Use the promo code Corona. <laughs> well, no, like we got to put it available for streaming for fifty yeah. bucks. And then when it's done, we'll put it back in theaters. Yeah. And then you can use that advertising campaign, and like even if you watch it at home, you know, experience, experience it on, on the, the big, big screen. screen. Yeah. And I, I can see people doing that. I don't, I don't think it will hurt the bottom line. I know uh, the funniest thing they come out from the Mulan scenario is they changed Mulan so drastically to fit the China market. Oh. But now it's now not it's, like because there's no singing. Yeah. The Mishu or whatever's Chinese not in it. Chinese people hate singing. Well, no, like, and my my wife, were, were, she was talking about it. She's like, oh, I really want to go see Mulan. And she's like, let's put on some tracks. Cause she grew up with that yeah. movie. And I was like, you know none of these songs are going to be in the movie, right? And she's like, she literally almost, like, pushed the brake of the car going, wait, what? And I go, or, what? Yeah, she's like, what? What, what do you mean? They're not going to have, you know, reflection and all. Yeah. She started naming off all this. When Christina Aguilera covered a lot, you know, all this stuff. Show. And... I was like, yeah, you didn't know that? I guess they wouldn't advertise that. I wonder yeah. how many people are going to go see oh, that movie bunch, expecting bunch. music in it, uh, I bet and then ton. no one sings it. A ton. And so As many like, people as went to Les Mis thinking that it wouldn't be all singing and then realized that it went was. Who went to Les Mis, whatever the movie's called, not expecting. Me? I had no idea. I thought they were singing, but not. I didn't know every word of dialogue was going to be singing. Oh, that's how the movie moves. That's how the show moves. Yeah, but in the, in the plays and stuff, there's a, well, one play that doesn't have any singing at all. There's one theatrical re- version of Les Mis. It doesn't have singing at all. There's one that has some songs like every other musical. Oh, but yeah. this one, I thought there'd be songs, but not right. exclusively. Let's do box office wrap up. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, actually, before we do that, next week uh, in studio. Let's move back. Yeah, uh, before we move forward, let's move backward. Uh, next week in studio, I don't think I'm going to be here, but Chris and Dick will be in studio. Unless Dick is still in like New Orleans. That could be code. That's, Kurt, that's Chris. Chris, sorry. Unless Chris is still in New Orleans, which could be code for something else. I don't really know. Maybe he's a sleeper agent. Ooh, oh, what if he was like an FBI guy and the reason he's disappeared, it's like he's one of those guys who like 9-11. He does wear watches. He had a conference or whatever, Ooh, and they're always synchronized. Yeah, he knows what's they're, they're always synchronized. Uh, next week in studio, we're going to have a guy named David Bourne be on the show. Uh, I'm pulling his IMDb up right now. David Bourne is a native Texan. Yeah, he's, I believe he's from the Houston area, we think. Yeah. He's a veteran character actor in film, television, and stage. Uh, he is, oh, he's a licensed auctioneer internationally recognized impressionist and a stand-up comedian. He's a Robin Williams impersonator, like one of the top Robin Williams impersonators. Been in a ton of movies. Uh, Most notably, 2019 had had a movie, The Highwaymen, that came out on Netflix starring Kevin Costner. He was not the lead, but he was definitely a major character in that. Yeah, Uh, he's like in Friday Night Lights, the TV show. Uh, He was in the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. He, From what I understand, it looks like looking at his Rolodex, it's it's more of Texas-based filming. Yeah. Uh, and things like that. And his his main deal is Robin Williams impersonator. I think that's his main because uh, he's going to be performing, I believe, next Friday here in uh, in downtown Conroe at the Crichton because they're doing the Rising Stars of Texas. Uh, so does he just event. do like? Does he just do Robin Williams act as Robin Williams? I think he combines it because okay. he's it, when he came in and was on another show. I thought it was really interesting because he he could focus Robin Williams, but he was reacting to conversation so he wasn't just doing bits it was like he was talking to you like trying to impersonate like he knows enough he he, he's studied robin williams enough to know like how he might react so i'm really excited about getting him in and if you have any questions but he's coming in as himself he's not coming in. i want him to come in as himself because i would would get real tired talking but he's gonna have to do a little bit of robin williams impression no you don't think at all no at least least like a impression i want to talk about his acting i know but people want to hear him people want to hear him do the i'm not going to be here to force it to happen what we're going to do for the next episode 126 is you can write in questions for David. Okay. And, and uh, Connor, you can write in questions too. Oh. Yeah. So oh, so the first thing you said was for the audience. Bet. And then the second thing was for me. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Well, David Bourne will be on next show, so that'll be pretty cool. To write in I'd questions to the ticket sub podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, or at the underscore ticket sub on Twitter. That'd yeah. be a good way yeah, to yeah. do it as well. And that would be count as a DM if you DM'd us to get in or message to mm-hmm. enter your name. Uh, no, it doesn't because we need to know more oh, yeah. information. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. All right. Let's do the box office wrap up. Yay. So uh, people apparently are still going to the movies. So here is the March 6th through 8th weekend. Or are they? Or are they? Top five earners. Number one, Onward. Little puppy dog film. That's a little puppy dog. So it earned 40. What do you mean puppy dog film? It's a Pixar. Oh, oh, never mind. What was the one? Sorry. What was the Homeward? What was the one? Oh, my gosh. What was the, the Call one? of the Wild? Oh, Call of the Wild. <laughs> 
<sighs> my brain's feeling a little scrambled. I don't know what's you wrong feel with sick? me. Onward is the Pixar movie about the trolls or whatever. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're blue. They're, they're looking for their dad. Yeah, ooh, domestic 40 million opening. I bet that's not what they were hoping for. What do you think? The, uh, worldwide, 68 million. Uh, the budget was only 150. So they're only... Uh, Eighty million in the hole. Well, this is this is for the uh, release dates of March sixth through the eighth. I already said that. So, do you think this is the kind of the first tale of the cr- impact of the? I think so. I think the fact that this Pixar movie didn't do more than forty million is going to definitely be a sign of things to come. Uh, the Invisible Man did fifteen million it, worldwide. Did eight, ninety-eight million, um, but that's already been out a little bit. Right, so. See right here, I put a little thing. It says, "Oh, week number two. Week number two. I'm sorry, this 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 graph is kind of weird. So I'm trying it's to not. I'm trying to understand it's it here. Kind of easy. <clears throat> it, it, uh, Title: Seven million dollars domestic <laughs> earnings, worldwide earnings. Seven million dollar budget. The fact they made ninety eight million on seven million. I bet they're pretty happy. Pretty pretty good. The way back. Eight million dollars opening weekend on a nine nine million worldwide. Twenty five million budget. Not great. Sonic the Hedgehog. Dang, it's made two ninety five worldwide. It only did eight million this weekend. 95 million budget. They're pretty happy with that as well. Call of the Wild. That's a little puppy dog. That's a little puppy dog. Made 7 million this weekend. Which isn't even real. What, a puppy dog? Yeah, it's not a real dog. I think like 90% of the. Oh, yeah, it's mostly. I mean, dogs are real, but this dog in particular is not real. Uh, 7 million this weekend. Has well, one- would it be hilarious if, like, the underlining reason for that is Harrison Ford hates dogs? Uh, yeah, because I can see that move because Harrison Ford is at that high of a movie actor where it's like an Orson Welles scenario where it's like, I'm not gonna do that. Like, I'm not gonna have a dog. I'm not gonna deal with a dog because <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't want to be around dogs, so he forces it. I'll do this movie, but I will not be near a dog. Maybe he's got a serious pet dander allergy. Hey, you hear that dogs are not susceptible to Corona, so you don't have to worry oh, about. Told your me pet. they were. I just saw a thing. It was on Facebook. So Facebook. Fa- yeah, fa- yeah, MSM. It made 114 total on a 125 <laughs> budget. We're having this conversation because Holly's like, what happens if we get quarantined together? And I'm like, well, thank goodness we're married. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> another thing I love, she's like, well, you know, dogs can, uh, Freddie or Freddie can get it. And I go, well, we'll just gonna have to see what happens. Like, what happens if she dies? And I was like, we'll just throw her over the fence. <laughs> Burn the body. <laughs> Put her in the fireplace, burn the body. Yeah, I had a I had some friends I was talking to last night, and uh, they were like, you know, if you die, that'd be really sad. But if either of our dogs die, I'll never I'll never recover. <laughs> they were just joking, but um, anyway, that's pretty funny. So, upcoming movies for this coming we'll week. Burn the dog. It's probably the safest way to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to. I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, let's on, be real. Uh, let's what, be real. What was our movie? Our, our virus movie? Yeah, outbreak. Yeah, outbreak. They burned all those bodies in Africa. Burn the bodies. Carpet bomb. We got to carpet bomb them. Okay, so movies coming out this next weekend, March, March 13th weekend. I'm trying to get to a spot where I can actually look these up. I don't have my computer Well, today. Bloodshot is the Vin Diesel movie oh, where he gets nanobotted. So he gets nanobotted, so he's indestructible. Which is, I bet you that's why he, he wanted to do the movie. He's like, I love being on screen, and then I love being on screen. That makes me indestructible. Oh, he, he loves so that. He loves that. He yeah. loves that. So, so he, he, he apparently he's a soldier who dies, yes. and they bring him back with nanobot technology. Yes. And he actually is, super, is he the bad guy? No, he's the good guy. I think what the trailer gives way too much. So if you haven't seen the trailer, do not watch it. Well, uh, if you're nanobot, who could ever fight you? Like who's other gonna... nanobots? Duh. Oh, is there more nanobot people? Yeah. Okay. He well. got the Walmart version. <laughs> he got the great value nanobots. <laughs> and then well, uh, another movie oh. coming out is The Hunt, where we've been talking about because it was delayed. And what I find hilarious, they delayed it because of political reasons. And now they're probably wishing they could delay it even further because yeah. of. Uh, Health reasons. Yeah, I'm into this movie. I think this is going to be really interesting. Uh-huh. See, yeah. the, see, this is the perfect movie to release for the twenty dollar deal. This is a streaming. Yeah, like this is like, hey, the hunt, or I mean, twenty, thirty bucks. I don't know what the the right way to price it. That's a counting. Or thing. another thing would be just sell it to Netflix. Well, I don't no, know if Netflix it, is interested. Well, you can't. You gotta get it out. You gotta. You they've already promoted it. They've already done all this stuff, and that that's the that's the best thing to do is just say, hey, spend a couple thousand dollars on. Facebook ad saying we're going to release it temporarily for yeah. streaming right here. On- I think twenty to twenty five dollars is a sweet spot for something like that where people would spend it. I think if you get the thirty more, even though there's the value of the ticket to the movie theater, I think people will view it differently because they're at home. But if you had it in twenty 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 five dollars, I could see uh, you know me and Lindsay tonight being like, well, let's just rent that. You know, we can't go. We're not, we're not going to go to the theater. Well, we don't want to get coroned up, so we're just going to watch. Well, one thing uh-huh. I would like to see happen in the future of purchasing movies online and watching movies at movie theaters is similar to what the concert uh, scenes doing with a bunch of musicians or bigger musicians is they don't make any money off the record sales anymore because of how much control 
the record companies have mm-hmm. or the, the the production companies, producing companies have. So what they started doing is to, uh, when you buy a ticket, because tickets are astronomical expensive, they include the CD. And mm. so you can download it. So yeah. you really aren't producing a CD and they give you a CD. It's like, here's a download code. Yeah. And like, I would like to see that happen more with the movie industry, especially if Disney's buying movie theaters and stuff like that. Like that to me, you're going to hit that point where people aren't going to pay $19 to see a movie. But yeah, they used to sell the DVD with the digital, you know, it'd be the Blu ray, DVD, yeah, digital download. But no one's really one. wanting a physical copy anymore. Yeah. But I'm saying this is like another version of that. Like if I was Amazon and I'm producing this movie and you go see it, I think if there's, they got to have a technology where if I took a picture of the ticket, and or, or something, or a little, yeah, a little code on. I don't really, yeah, I don't see. That's what I, I would like to scratcher. see. Scratcher, you put a little scratcher on the back. People love to scratch. Also, people love scratching things off tickets. So you scratch it off, enter the code in, then you have access to the thing online. Yeah, perfect. We just solved it. And I, I mean, I, I mean, that's a, this is a wish because yeah. to me, it's like, oh, I bought a ticket, I get ten dollars off. What those. you need to do is make that a because uh, there's something crazy going on with Amazon when it comes to purchasing movies from them. They, it's like this, it's like the gas market where. <laughs> some movies are really expensive. Some movies are dirt cheap. Like we recently purchased Dennis the Menace, and it was like seventeen dollars. The actual physical disc? The no, the like to rent what? or not to rent to, to buy on Amazon. Why did you buy? Why did you buy Dennis the Menace? Holly wanted to watch it. You, so know? you bought it for seventeen dollars, and I was like, man, that's expensive for a yeah. movie that came out in the nineties. Yeah. But then when you go to Amazon, you can buy the DVD for like you know eight dollars. And I was maybe they're like, trying to push DVD sales. Maybe. I don't really know. Maybe I they just, have a warehouse full there, of Dennis there, the Menace DVDs. It just doesn't seem like a, an equal part to the, the purchasing world. I'm telling you, they have a whole warehouse full of Dennis the Menace DVDs they're trying to push. And so they're like, let's make the rental three times as much as actually buying the DVD. Well, she rented Parasite, and it was like $9. And I think that was right right, right before the Oscars. And I was like, that's 9 bucks. Like, what? And then it was with tax and all that yeah. stuff. But I was like, that's a high rental fee. But then again, it it's, I guess it's well, surge it, pricing. Well, it's probably that movie where like we're gonna get everything we can get. That's right. Well, yeah. Before nobody ever watches it ever again. Yeah. And Let's, then the, the other thing coming out, I still believe. No, this is like a Christian movie, I think. Right. I have no idea. I just saw. I'm pretty sure. It's, pretty sure it's a Christian movie. I figured that'd be up your right alley. So. Uh, well, I I am not positive, but I think it is. Um, and if so, I'm sure that the Christian people will all go see it, and I probably will see it. I a true story. Oh yeah, this is a. A true story of a Christian music star, Jeremy Camp. Oh, yeah, he's a real music star. And guy. his journey of love and loss. Oh, there we go. I think he wrote a song called I Still Believe, so I bet I bet that song's not played in the movie, though. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that's what's coming up in the box office break. That's exciting. Down. So let's go to break real quick. No, we don't need a break. You don't want to go to break? Sometimes I like to go to break just to kind of re- re- recoup, you oh, know, no, refresh. No, no, no. Quick break, just a quick one. Just a really quick one. Plus, we have some beautiful ads that I'm sure need to get played or whatever. And we'll regroup. We'll come back. We'll do movie news, and then we'll do the rewinds, the movies that we've seen over the last week. Spoiler alert, I don't have one. Dick does, but we'll cover all that. Spencer Confidential coming your way. (laughs) Available on Netflix right now. We'll be right back. Bye. This is not a drill. Hey, Stubbies, this is Dick. Uh, It's a break right now during our show, and I just want to let you know a couple things that are happening with the Ticket Sub Podcast and update you on some cool stuff. That's right. First, if you didn't know, we're always giving away two tickets to the Grand and Amstar Theaters around the country. Every week, we give away a pair of tickets to a random winner. Uh, The issue is we can't give them away to you unless we know who you are. Uh, What you need to do is submit an entry by either emailing us at theticketsubpodcast at gmail.com or direct message, direct message us on social media, and then your name will be entered in our random real name picker. That name you submit, though, won't leave the picker. So you'll be entered every week, uh, even if you win. Uh, so make sure to include the best way to contact you and how we can get the tickets to you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, once you enter, you enter forever, so you could win every week, like I said. Again, uh, just email us at the tickets to podcast at gmail.com or direct message us on our social media. And so next would be we are looking for suggestions on movies that we should review, or at least I am. Uh, you can always email us at the email address I said several times, and then you can direct message on social media. Uh, probably the most important thing that uh, is happening with the tickets sub is the broadcast on Lone Star Community Radio is going towards a nonprofit. That's right, 5013C nonprofit profit status. So you can actually support our show by donating specifically to the Tickets to the Podcast or become one of our sponsors. 
uh, for, of our show. So if you're interested in donating or sponsoring our program, the tickets to podcast at gmail.com is the best way to contact us. Or you can visit us online at our website at irlonestar.com slash TTS. That is our webpage. Uh, we're going to put donation info on there. So if you want to be a donor, or again, if you're a business or something that you want to uh, sponsor the program on a reoccurring basis, uh, we do have sponsorships available. So that's the big news. Uh, let's get back to the show. Dick signing out. Welcome back on the ticket stuff. Wasn't that break nice, Dick? I get. I'm the one doing everything. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't really like doing taking breaks. That's just because it makes more work for you. Because I like, have to do. Crap. You have to click a couple more buttons. I know, but we kind of get to catch our breath, you know, reset our minds, because we were talking about the box office, now we're moving on to movie news, and we need to, you know, get things ready for uh, the news ahead. Um, so, I want to talk a couple things really quick. First off, South by Southwest closed in yeah. Austin. Man, that's huge. I mean, they're closing everything, so it's not surprising. Yeah, I mean, that's a great venue for uh, low-profile movies to get seen and get say, talked about, the, get the buzz. Yeah, what, what the implication is going to be for some of those movies that might otherwise have had a chance to get a little bit of you know, publicity. Well, again, this is that streaming solution where it's not the best solution, but it's the best they could do. Especially on no notice. On no notice. Yeah. And, like, like one thing I would, I would encourage uh, South by Southwest and other industry uh, film festivals like that is – you could do special things where, you know, you could do South by Southwest at home, okay, and spend two hundred bucks, and you get access to like the movie premieres or you know something like that where yeah. you get one time deal to watch them and then yeah, they're gone. The, how are they going to make that? They have to have an app or something. I mean, I don't really know how they would do it because it's kind of like what they're doing with the Oscars. Where now they're gonna the, the next Oscars they're making it available to all the movie screening online. Oh, so that'll be good. People can't have an excuse of not watching like having the flexibility yeah. of watching the movie to vote which is ridiculous to me that you could vote for the oscars and not have seen all the yeah choices. and I, I that to me is the logical decision yeah but when you're when you're talking about festivals this big and you know like how do we re- prevent something this big ever happening again that's how you do it yeah well it's definitely there, there's a lot of fallout besides just the you know top of the pyramid here like when you hear about things like the houston rodeo or when you hear about the nba being canceled there's so many people whose livelihood is supported by those things also i mean think about south by i'm sure that austin relies on the money that comes in yeah from i that. think it's like 325 million dollars comes in just on south just by Southwest. Just and so you think about all the small businesses all the restaurants yeah. all the hotels all the airbnbs well, the livestock and rodeo same thing yeah i mean i know the livestock rodeo people have been raising those cows for like a year trying to sell them and stuff and now they just I guess. Well, no, them. they did recently announce the scholarships will be provided. Still, they're just still going to. But how do they that. give them out for people? They don't know who won or whatever. Isn't it all about like who won? In the certain ones. Okay. Well, I don't know. Those no, people are just SOL. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, but yeah, it's crazy because there's all the you know Mark Cuban for the Dallas Mavericks was saying that they're they're and this may just be him saying they're going to try, but they're going to try to figure out ways to maybe even pay their their minimum wage employees. Yeah, like the vendor people. Yeah, because like those people need those like those are their jobs, you know, and what if all of a sudden your job just was like, "Oh, sorry, you can't come to work for 6 months." Uh that would really screw you over a little bit. I don't I really hope this doesn't last for 6 months. Yeah, me too, but that'd be wild. I don't want to be stuck with my wife. <laughs> I love you, Holly. <laughs> We'd watch so many movies on Netflix. But uh, she doesn't even like the movies I like. That's the worst <laughs> yeah, thing. No, you're wanting to watch Spencer Confidential, and she doesn't want to probably watch it. No, she it. wanted to watch this. Okay. She, right. There are certain actors that we meet in the middle on, and Mark Wahlberg is certainly one Marky of them. Marky Mark. Well, he's got the sex appeal. Uh, I mean, I guess. He's actually a good comedic actor. Oh, I love Mark Wahlberg. And uh, I will. he's up there where I'll pretty much see any movie he's in. And You think I'm a good actor? Yeah. Uh, that's my Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very good impressionist, as you could probably tell. Oh, but that man. is a spot on Mark Wahlberg. Uh, so another thing going on in movie news, I saw this on the New York Times, Tom Hanks has the corona, and his wife, sorry, yeah. sorry, Rita, or whatever her name is, but Tom Hanks, uh, one of the first, like, really famous high-profile well, people that I saw. He's the one, he's the one that came out and said it. Yeah. Which I think is kind of interesting, because, like, why would you need to tell us, Tom? I think it's probably trying to... Because now everyone who, like, knows you, like, I talked to him yesterday. <laughs> My guess is, number one, it's probably because he wants people to know that it's... But I, I bet it's so people will take it more seriously. That even you know? gods can be affected. <laughs> even gods can bleed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I, it was kind of it's weird because it was like a... It was kind of the, the both sides of the coin going like, oh, it's nice that he's promoting, like, self-awareness. But then it's like the other side goes, man, if he dies, everyone's going to be sad. Oh. And then everyone's going to, like... like wonder if they talk to tom yeah 
because that's the biggest deal from what I understand. Like the livestock rodeo thing, there's a couple people got infected here in Montgomery because someone came from Italy and like, and they don't release information about where they were in the public. Because basically they said about the livestock guy, was like, he went to the barbecue. There's like 1 million people there. Yeah, and you're like, okay, well, what tent or what time or, you know, because really what the, the people need to realize is getting tested, but getting tested has a cost and labor to it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of so people saying that they should. when you just like, generally say he was there at the barbecue festival, anyone, like if, if he was there past 9 p.m., anyone before that be like, oh, I don't have to go get tested, I'm good. I've seen a lot of people saying that, you know, why aren't there tests everywhere? Like, why aren't they having test drive through testing it? Well, Walgreens. they should come to my house and test me. <laughs> yeah. And then they should probably look around and see if I'm doing anything else, suspicious, other suspicious activity. <laughs> While they're there. I mean, they already want to do that. So it's the government. Yeah. Uh, get the NSA involved. Yeah. Well, uh, Tom Hanks, I mean, wouldn't it be crazy? I was thinking about this because there's a couple of athletes, uh, Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell for the NBA have been have both been tested positive for it. Wouldn't it be wild? I mean, there's not that many things like this where it actually affects like famous high profile people that everybody knows. I mean, like the flu, not that often. Do you, I mean, maybe it happens. Well, we just don't hear about we're it. also looking at something that we don't fully understand in the sense of this isn't like a, a, mut- a mutant thing where if you get it, you're dead. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, and I think a lot of people are, that's the way people are viewing it. Like, yeah. oh, if you get it, man, good luck. But also Tom Hanks, is he's in the age range where uh, more susceptible to dying from the old corona. Yeah, but as again, it's just the flu. Yeah. But the problem with it is just the infection rate so high and the ch- and the conversion rate of that. And, well, and, then, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the death rate's higher, too, at least as of right now. Well, the now. flu kills people. Yeah, but this is killing more people. If, because the infection rate is higher than the flu. No, but if it's percentage of people who get it who die, it's a higher percent is what they're saying. It's like they say the flu. I'm just telling you. They say the flu on a bad year will kill like 0.1 to 0.2% of people who get it. Like one in a thousand, two in a thousand. This is killing like three points. This is killing like three percent. So it's like three in a hundred. But you're also looking at numbers that are a lot lower than the overall flu. Inf- inf- and well, I understand, but it's percent of people. It's just percent. Do you understand that? Do you understand work. what I'm saying? Do you understand how percents work? It's like well, if you took a whole pie and you cut, it you and like okay, cut 3% we're of the pie. We're taking a break here. <laughs> So think of this <laughs> this way. you The average year I'm making this number up, 100,000 people get the flu. Gotcha. 1.3% die, right? Sure. Okay, whatever, yeah. 10,000 people get corona. Okay. You know, 3 point whatever percent. So that, those, those numbers don't really match because more people get infected with the normal flu than that. Per, those percentages aren't equal. Because you're based on a different sample. No, that's what per- I know, but that's what that's why you use percentages because it tells you similarities between two unlike things. Like it, it, it's it's a ratio. The ratio of people who get coronavirus to die as of right now, and they may realize that more people had it and aren't dying, and so it's actually a lower percent than what they think. But that's how they do everything. Percentages. That's the reason why they if, use the if, percentage. Obviously, it's less total people dying. Yeah. Yes. 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 So yes. we're good. Okay. So that's all. That. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then we're good. Well, Tom. Uh, wish you well. Uh, I mean, if it takes one Tom to go away and then we save the rest of people, I'm down. I'll sacrifice. I'll Woody. throw him over the fence. Yeah, Woody. Uh, although that would make – Toy Story 3 would be even sadder if you knew that Tom Hanks was dead from coronavirus watching that one. That's a pretty tearjerker movie anyways. No, they, there's computers out there that will be able to mimic his oh, voice. Oh, deep fake him. We'll just <laughs> – and get his son. <laughs> they have enough samples of his audio, so What's it's it? like, we can make it again. Yeah, we could just create a new uh, whole Westworld Tom Hanks bot. Well, that's one thing I want to ask David. It'd be real awkward when he comes in next week and say, hey, has anyone approached you to do voiceover work as Robin Williams when it's you know post-Robin Williams' career? Like for uh, Aladdin, you know, Prince of Thieves? you know that that has to have happened uh, okay, oh, like in he's... one scenario. Because who was – there's a couple of times an actor passed away before they were finished. And they're like, yeah. we got we to – well, like, oh, what's Paul his, Walker. Paul Walker, yeah. yeah. I bet, dude, you need to ask David Bourne. Write this one down. Was he mad that they didn't ask him to do the genie voice? Because Robin Williams only did, like, the first Aladdin, I think, or maybe first the two. second one. But there's a third one, and somebody else did that. Was it him? No, it was not him. So, and then uh, the cartoon was not him. I think the I think uh, Return of Jafar was him. But then Prince of Thieves was not. And then Prince of Thieves wasn't. But he's got to be pissed about that because he's like the, he's like the uh, Robin Williams guy. But they won't pay you enough. They won't. Because those are direct to video, so they can't they can't get like because most people who work for and this will be a question for David too. Say you work on a TV series, which he did, as an as the industry, do you expect to get paid more the more you work? In a sense of like, say I've been on the show for seven seasons, how much more money did you make after every season? Because I know that's a lot of issues with uh, TV shows that go beyond like the third season because when the contract comes up, it's like we got double their pay now. Yeah, which is 
basically doubles our budget, which we don't have. Oh, but David Bourne wouldn't make the Robin Williams money, so I'm just saying. Well, I'm saying Robin Williams. So, for example, Robin Williams did the first Aladdin. Yeah. He made $1 million because sure. it's a worldwide release movie. And then when they're making a direct sequel to video, they're like, hey, this is a smaller budget. We're not paying you more money. We're not going to even pay you a million because this is a straight VOD. Yeah, but so, the, I'm just saying David Bourne's probably pissed that they didn't call him up for that. They probably did. Yeah. He just won't tell anybody. Maybe so. Because uh, that's got to be the awkward part of making <laughs> movies. It's like you know that Paul Walker passed away, and they had to finish the movie. Yeah. And but some movies do it really well, where it's like, what was that uh, Kevin Spacey movie where they literally just redid the movie yeah, got and it. took them all out? That wasn't Gotti. It was some, uh, was it Gotti? Maybe not Gotti. It was something like that, though. Yeah, whatever. They put Christopher Plummer in. It wasn't Gotti. Yeah. It was something similar, though. But we're looking forward to having David in the studio next Thursday, and yeah. And yeah. That. All right, that's what the movie news we got. Dick, uh, we're doing the rewinds part of the show where we talk about yeah. the movies that we've seen so, the last week. I didn't see a movie this week. I apologize for that. Uh, I was out of town. Of this break. month, on the 6th, Netflix released their movie, Spencer Confidential. So but This looks like a riot. I'm, I've been watching so, the trailer on the uh, off monitor here. I had no idea really about this movie until I are, saw are it on this? Netflix. Are, are they seeing this? They're ne- seeing it okay. now. They're seeing okay. the trailer. I had no idea about this movie. I had no idea it was really coming out. I didn't know it was a Netflix movie. Um, Netflix doesn't do the best job promoting the stuff that's coming out. Well, I think that's... I think that's also because of the the way people pay attention to stuff. They don't. It's not like a worldwide release. They yeah. don't really say March six. Check this movie out. Yeah. Uh, like HBO does a good job because every time you watch an HBO show, uh, no, they have see, a trailer. It's exactly. like coming this month. Yeah. Do, 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 do. That's what Netflix needs um, to get better at. They're they're working on it. I bet. But basically, this is an, uh, an hour and 15 minutes, rated R. An hour and 15? Hour and 51. Oh, sorry. I thought it was like, tight. It's an action comedy crime movie. Uh, it's based off of a TV show called Spencer for Hire, which had three seasons, and also a book uh, called Spencer. It, uh, the original character is Avery Brooks, if you don't know who that is. Uh, he played Hawk, and then Robert Ur- Urich played Spencer. Uh, so in this movie, Mark Wahlberg plays Spencer, and Winston Duke plays Hawk. Uh, is that the black guy? That's the big, big dude. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the the synopsis of this movie is when two Boston police oh, it's officers. What, well, I'm trying to do this. <laughs> I'm mean, watching the trailer. Post Malone. Oh my god. I don't do this when you're giving your deal. Yeah, you interrupt me all the all time. The time. Uh, when two Boston <laughs> police officers are murdered, ex cop Spencer teams up with no nonsense roommate Hawk to take down criminals. Uh, I will say that synopsis is about seventy percent true. Uh, the movie... It's oh, about 70%. Well, because it, it, they introduced it as like a buddy cop movie or buddy buddy movie. It really didn't feel like that. Like, okay. I didn't really see the relationship between Spencer and Hawk in this movie in a sense of like, I'm going to take opposites? a bullet. I'm going to take a bullet for you. There really wasn't that kind of moment. Uh, it was kind of strange because the movie had some plot, not holes, but I would say like... Uh, plot terrors? I, don't, I mean... There were some things that didn't make sense. No way. And I wanted an audience. I want the listeners and stuff to help me out. So let me um, let me go over the star who's in the movie, and then uh, keep going through that. Okay. So the movie is directed by Peter Berg, uh, who is an actor director who's done a bunch of movies oh, love with love Peter Berg. Him with Mark Wahlberg. Him, Mark time. Wahlberg have made five total. What films. was that? Deep Horizon. Deep Horizon. Lone Survivor. Patriots Day. Mile Twenty Two. Uh, so it was directed by him, and then which they it, normally make kind of like almost true life action movies together. Yeah, they I I think they like like they they know how. To, I bet the reason they work so well is they make the movie really fast. They get the point, and I think that's what suffered in this movie because I'll go into more details on that. Uh, it also stars Alan Arkin, who's an Oscar winner. He's uh, plays Henry, who's the father of uh, Mark Wahlberg's character. He's it was in Little Miss Sunshine, Edward Scissorhands, Argo. You you probably know who that is. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know Eliza Lincoln. Schlesinger, who's a comedian, oh, she plays like uh, girlfriend Sissy Davis, and then Bokeem Woodbine as Driscoll. Uh, he plays the previous, like I said, his uh, ex cop. He was his partner when he was a cop. Um, plays Driscoll, TV actor. Uh, that's where who he is. Uh, Bokeem is. He's been in Riddick, Total Recall, The Rock, but he's primarily in TV. And then special appearance by Post Malone hey. and Mark Maron. Uh, he's oh. in the movie for a little bit. Okay. Uh, so uh, overall acting, I would say everyone did a good job and uh, got their character out there, but th- it wasn't, no one stood out. Uh, Liza, uh, Post Malone did all right. It was his first appearance in a full length, length feature film. He was okay. I think his tattoos really played well because he was in prison. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, he's kind of box himself in as far as doing anything other than that. Like if he wants to, yeah, like he's gonna play, acting. he's gonna play the Danny Trejo characters. So he's <laughs> like, like, you've been pigeonholed, bro. What if they put him in like a? What if they put him in like a rom com with like Jennifer Lawrence or something where they fall in love and he's like supposed to be some Jennifer guy. Lawrence with uh-huh. Post Malone? I could see it. Yeah, but he's supposed to be like some misunderstood guy who's like a writer or something. But he's got these like ridiculous barbed wire yeah. tattoos all over his face. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's trying to be an actor. I think Man, he, I think he probably wanted, he probably knew Peter Berg, you know, whatever. They're probably Didn't you hear in he, like, doesn't shower or he smells so bad that people like want to throw up. On I don't doubt it. Yeah, but girls still like him though. He's rich. I guess, man. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so this is where I want the audience, the listeners who watch this movie. The, the issues I had with this movie was. The biggest, the twist at the end did not meet my expectations. So in the beginning of the movie, uh, spoilers going Don't ahead. Don't spoil it. I can do I that. I haven't seen it. It's not my fault. I know, but I haven't seen it. Just uh, allude to it. Don't allude talk to about it. it. So the, well, I can't talk about this crap now. <laughs> Um, well, you can't, it's basically, the twist at Netflix, the end. Don't, everyone's like interested in it. They're gonna go watch it now. You're gonna yeah. Tell so them the twist end. at the end didn't really make a lot of sense to me in the impact. Okay. Because they're trying to lead it up to where this big criminal mastermind, this this huge conspiracy theory. Yeah. And like, I just didn't see the amount like who it, who was in charge of it all. I just didn't see it. Like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Uh, the there's probably gonna be a sequel to this. That's how they kind of alluded really? to it. Well, it's, it's based off a series, so it's like, uh, they oh, got, they go on adventures they together. They got a lot of stuff. Uh, I got a really big Jack Reacher vibe mm. from the movie because basically Mark Wahlberg goes blind when he sees people in, in like, oh, they're they're unjustified in, their, yeah. in the way people are treating them and they're wrongly accused. He literally accused. goes blind? Well, I'm saying like he just gets like, oh. he gets really upset. And they're like, Spencer, okay. don't do it, don't do it. And he's <laughs> like, well, I'm going to have to because I just care so much. That'd be a bad superpower if you literally went blind when you saw injustice. Oh, and then, like, and, <laughs> if you were a cop. And I mean, I get it, but I don't at the same time. And uh, but it was funny. They they did it. They did a lot of funny moments. And one thing I will say, the trailer does not match a lot of the movie. And then, so that kind of upset me a little bit. Like for example, in the trailer, there's a scene where Hawk is in the car. He has headphones on, and he's listening to classical music. And then inside the thing, Mark Wahlberg's getting beat up. Well, that scene, he's not listening to classical music. It's not really like it. Oh. It's really strange. I was like, why well, put that in the trailer? Yeah. And then have that done. I, I think really what happened was they didn't spend enough time on the script because I did not feel like it was a buddy cop movie or buddy buddy movie. Mm-hmm. You, I really didn't see the relationship being developed. The girlfriend, who's played by Schlesinger, the comedian, she really had no Dr. purpose Laura. in it. She Dr. had some great lines in Dr. it. Dr. Laura Schlesinger. Uh, she was really funny in her delivery. She played a typical Boston overreacting girl. Uh, which I, I think adds some flavor to the movie. You get it that's in Boston, and yeah. when, when she interacted, it was really funny. Uh, but she really didn't do anything much like to help the movie. She wrote, showed up at random points, and to the point where you're like, you wouldn't go with them. Yeah. Like, why is she going with them? <laughs> um, I love it when, like, the girlfriend in a movie will make these ridiculous choices that, like, like Holly, you know, someone like Holly. Well, like, there's a scene make. where they're, like, we're going to go challenge the bad guys. Why would she be there? Yeah, hey, you want to come, babe? We're yeah, gonna, like, well, why you. would you go? Uh, <laughs> She's like, no. There's always that scene in the movie, like, no, I'm coming with you. Or like a little kid will do yeah. that. Like, I'm like, like some, little no. seven, some little seven-year-old's like, no. all right, we're going to fight the boss. I'm coming too. Okay, come on, kid. But it's available Makes on Netflix. Uh, I'd love to talk more about it with folks, so let us know your thoughts about Definitely Spencer. Definitely worth, worth watching. I, I would say it's the perfect Netflix movie. Gotcha. So you're not paying too much yeah. for it. And you can watch it. It's easy to swallow. Like you don't have to pay attention a hundred percent. Yeah, I think um, Netflix, I think that's like Netflix's niche. Like, you know, they don't need to try. Like, I feel like Amazon is doing more of the Oscar quality movies and HBO. Like, let them kind of handle that. Uh, Hulu's got like TV and all that kind of stuff. Netflix is like movies to have where it's kind of like I just want to chill. I mean, Netflix and chill, but like literally, I just want to chill. Yeah, and watch stuff. I don't want to think too much. I don't want to have to like be so invested that if I have to hit pause and go to the bathroom or go fold well, the laundry. To give people a perspective of this one, this is basically a comedy version of Jack Reacher. Yeah. And like Jack Reacher to me, was like the first one was really well made. It yeah. had that crime. It had the thriller good to twist. it. Good twist. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it, you got involved, the good action, good acting. And, uh, what's the, what's the weird Russian guy's name? Uh, oh dude. He's like, I love, I love what's his, <laughs> the German actor. Man, he was oh, so German? good in that. Yeah, he. Uh, Shoot, we should we should know his he name. He bit off his fingers. Yeah. What was that line? Man, I just went blank. That was such a good bad guy. Why did he bite his fingers off? Because he was in a 
he was in a uh, a cell in well, Siberia. I'm in Siberia. I'm and in a cell, and I uh, would you bite your fingers because I'm a prey, not a predator. To prevent frostbite. Oh, is that what it was? The gangrene. What? I know that guy's name. Man, why that's can such I a not, great why scene. Why can I not think of it? Hold on, you talk for me. Herzog. His last yeah, name Werner. Is Werner Herzog. Werner Herzog. But yeah, he bites his own fingers. He's like, you can do the same, but die. Yeah. <laughs> and he has like great accent. And he's like blind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, the, the dude, but he's still like people are still following him. Like, I he's still the I, No one knows how that's that what works. I always love when the mastermind is like, why doesn't someone just beat that guy up and they take charge? Like in a real mob or whatever, wouldn't that happen? Well, I think it comes down to you prevent your henchmen knowing where their bank account, like how yeah, they're getting paid. I guess is. So you're the one who controls the money. That's what I love about the Joker and the, the Dark Knight is like you're sitting there as a henchman and like they have this pile of cash and he's about to bl- he's about to burn it all. I'd yeah. be like, hey dude, boom, you're dead. <laughs> like this <laughs> is. <laughs> I'm rich. I, I mean, I, that's one thing I loved about that movie when I saw that because I was like, "Why isn't someone just shooting this dude and putting out the fire?" Like, it's not like they're religious, yeah. like z- zealots, or they yeah. just follow everything the Joker does. He's very convincing when he talks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was waiting for that part, but it didn't happen. All right, well, Sp- uh, Spency Confidential. Yeah, Pretty it's good. available on Netflix. Check it out. Uh, next week, I'm either going to review Yesterday. Yesterday, or I'm going to review Hobbs and Shaw's coming to HBO, and I really oh, finally yeah, want to see that. So. Uh, Dude, probably gonna review that. Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw is your movie. Yesterday, well, yesterday is good, but it's very like uh, it's very like Disney. Well, we started watching it. Holly and I did, and I told her I was like, I don't, I'm not really interested in this, and I'm not gonna last. So next time we sit down, I want to sit down and like finish it. Yeah, but I'm not gonna last tonight. Like I'm, I, yeah. I don't care. I'm tired. It's a, it's a good movie. It's Disneyfied for sure. Hobbs and Shaw. It's everything you can want from a Hobbs so, movie. You've seen it. Uh huh. So I've we got that. we. I wanted to ask you this. Why didn't they, and this is why I thought it would be really creative, but they didn't do it. So basically in the movie, it's based off everyone forgets the Beatles music, but this one character, and he starts figuring, remembering the songs. He's a musician, so he starts becoming popular because yeah. they think it's his music. Mm-hmm. Well, there was like a big jump where Ed Sheeran sees him on TV, and then all of a sudden it's where you think the movie's going, but within like five minutes. Yeah. And I was like, why didn't they just do what the Beatles did? Like study the history of how the Beatles – climbed up because they didn't become successful but in the states did overnight yeah. in a sense but like over there they didn't and so i was like why didn't they just do that i didn't really understand that i knew the movie where i knew where they're going with the movie i think they just wanted him to get famous in the yeah movie. i knew where they wanted it but it's like there's that's, gotta that's be a the more drama, the drama came in once he got famous because that's one thing i did not like because the only character that responded well to the beatles music was the the girl yeah she was the only one that really goes wow like that was really good. Everyone else is making fun of them. Yeah. You know, like when they hear it, they're like, oh, good job. You know, <laughs> like no one really, because the whole idea of the movie is how impactful that music is. Mm-hmm. And only one person so far is like really resonated with like, oh man, you are touching me in yeah. the heart. The, there, there's some good scenes where he's trying to remember all the lyrics to everything and stuff. It, there's definitely some good parts of that movie. I don't know. I, I'm not. I, I think Hobbs and Shaw is really yeah. my type of movie. Hobbs and Shaw is more. They style. touch me yeah, in the heart. It, it touches like me they deep. know how to do it deep, deep down. What I'm hoping to see because I've seen the trailer. What I'm hoping to see is they actually fight each other at one point as like a training montage. Ooh. But I I don't know because The Rock versus Jason Statham. I don't see that. No, the whole thing about really Jason Statham is like smooth. Yeah, and so has I'm like that. gadgets and stuff, and The Rock is more of like brute force. Yeah, it's kind I'm of excited yin and yang, it, if you will. Uh, well, I won't be here, so I'm not going to have a movie to watch. I'm sure Chris oh, will have something. Are you coming back? I might, might or might not. Hey, you can fly Check right now, like to tomorrow. You could fly to Hawaii round trip for three hundred dollars. Just FYI, if you're wanting to take a trip, uh, plane tickets are pretty. Well, cheap. I mean, I think that would be something that would be interesting. But the problem is the return. Well, but so if you get stuck like, in Hawaii, it's, it's kind of like, like, are you able to come back? But if you're in Hawaii, maybe you don't care that much. And then you call the government, and be like, I'm stuck. I don't have any money. Yeah, I need Social Security. Yeah, I need all this stuff. <laughs> That's probably to me the craziest thing that people are now dealing with. It's like no one really has a, f- a really good solution. Yeah, I was like, Ugh. I think like Andrew Yang's like, this is why UBI is a good option because people can get money. Stay home. Well, they like because some people, like yeah. you said, like yeah. they, they can't work, so how are they going to get paid? A lot of companies are doing good things where they're like, hey, we're continue paying you, but that that can only last so long. Yeah, companies can't just all so, go bankrupt paying everybody. Well, it's government almost, bailouts. Well, this is where Bernie Sanders needs to up that socialism thing. Yeah. Be like, we're going to do bread lines, and you have to pay for food. 
bread lines. Gosh, we're so screwed. We're not All bread right. lines. You know, you yeah, could, you could do crawfish yeah. lines. Yeah, I don't care. Burrito lines. Like <laughs> crawfish lines. Yum. <laughs> well, I would eat crawfish. Hey, it's boiled. Yeah, yeah it's deli- oh, that's a good point. Delicious. Corona free. Everybody, stay safe out there. If you go to the movies, um, wear a little hand sanitizer afterwards. Drink a little Lysol. Well, the nice thing about the ticket giveaway, the tickets are good for a year. That's right. Ooh, so, you can wait till this whole thing blows when over. It, when this thing goes in incubation period before the real Passover happens, <laughs> the Passover. I, the Passover re- I see. I, I came up with an idea. They should make the Passover too. Oh, but about coronavirus. But make it like action. Because, you know, the the, uh, the angel of death is coming to your doorstep. So that's my tagline. Yeah. Again. And oh, then uh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> it could be like Final Destination. Like yeah. if he passed over you the first time, he's coming back for you now. I think that'd be great. And then with the, the, whole, the whole twist is no one really knows how to be saved. Yeah. Because the whole world is lost at this point, religiously. Oh, we don't know the blood on the door. We don't know which. Re- we don't know what religion's the right one. Okay. So the comedic, tri- the, the comedic scene is everyone's trying different religions, trying to see which like works. A montage. Of yeah, it's like the menorah. And which stuff? one's gonna be it? Which one is the real God? What do we do? Oh, this has gotten deeper. And the, the, twi- the, the twist ending. R- spoiler alert: Nicholas Cage. Oh, he, he is it. He's the it. Only one left. Everybody, thanks. Tell a friend about the you show. You have to have his blood over your door, so <laughs> <laughs> everyone's chasing Nicholas Cage. <laughs> then he becomes the purge. Uh, oh. Everybody stay safe out there. Thank Isn't you for listening. He in the purge? Chair, Isn't he in a movie uh, like that? He's in that, that weird mom and dad movie. You remember no, that? he's in a lockup movie. He's got to be. I think. Uh, I don't know. Probably so. Maybe I'm just freaking. All right. Well, for Dick, my name is Connor. We're signing off on the ticket stub.